Hello, I recently received this nice little bag here that features tutting in the fabric. So I thought it would be interesting to come up with the pattern for this design here that you can see. So here's the uh, rosette I made. And I'm going to show you how to make it. The pattern for this design is available on my website. I'm going to add a link in the information box below the video so you can go and print it and follow along. So it's tatted with just one shuttle and we're going to start with the center ring here in the middle. Oh, you can also see here a larger piece I'm working on with lots of these little medallions attached together. The one we're going to make I'm going to attach here in the corner. This. So start with one shuttle and you want to leave about six, eight inches perhaps of unworked thread before making your first ring. And the center ring has um, eight picots separated by two stitches. So you want to make actually seven picots to start off because the last picot is a mock picot. So we're going to start here, first stitch, so two stitches, then a picot. Two stitches, a picot. And repeat until you have seven picots made with two stitches in between each. So that's two picot, three four, five, six, and seven. And close the ring. And now we're going to make the mock pico, so wrap the shuttle thread around your hand and use the loose bit of thread to make the mock picot. So we're going to do the second half of a double stitch but unflipped. So you pull that so that the picot here is the same size as the others. Then hold it with your thumb like this and then make the first half of a double stitch flipped. This locks it into place. Like this. And then you can turn your work over. So that's your loose bit of thread here on the left. And now we're going to start making the little rings, the little rings here of the second round. Those rings are three pico three. And you want to leave a really very, very small bit of bare thread. So you don't want it to be completely stuck to the um, to your pico when you're joining. And you want to leave just about a millimeter really, just to say it gives a little bit more space. So three stitches, a pico and three stitches. Close the ring. So that's the first little ring made. And then you want to make a lock join to the next pico. It's a lovely day and I'm filming this outside so you'll be hearing nature sounds and birds and some cars going down the street. And again, just before your lock join, you want to just leave a tiny bit of bare thread. And the next ring, again, as you can see, I leave just really a tiny, tiny bit of bare thread before the ring. So just a little bit before and after each ring. Three stitches, a pico, three stitches. Close the ring. lock join to the next pico on your center ring. So repeat that until you've made seven little rings. So here we are, I've made seven rings, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the last one is a split ring to move on to the next round without, without having to cut and tie. So we're doing the first half of the split ring with the shuttle. So three stitches, two, three. And then we're going to use 
the thread that we left at the beginning again to make the second half of the split ring. So using unflipped stitches in reverse order, so second half, first half, oops, first half, second half, first half, the two stitches, second half, first half, for three stitches. and close the ring. So that's your eight little rings made around your center ring. And this time we are going to do the mock picot after we've reversed work. So we're going to reverse work now and then wrap the little bit of loose thread around your hand and use the shuttle to make the mock picot. So a second half unflipped and pull it all the way so that your pico measures the same, measures the same as your other picots and the first half flipped. So now you leave your work with your centering stitches facing the right way up like this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hide the loose end into the first half of the next ring. The next ring is one of the big rings. We're going to start with one of the big rings and there are two stitches or rather seven picots separated by two stitches. So how I do it is I'm going to make just the first half to get me started and then I'm going to pull the loose end here underneath because I wanted to follow the core thread and here's a little trick I find that works really well for me is it may seem a little bit fiddly to accomplish while you're holding this with your hand but I pu pu push this through here in my shuttle the loose end like this, can you see? And then I'm gonna just pop it against the top of my bobbin here so that it holds it in place. I don't know if you can see. So here's my loose thread is just being held between the bobbin and the shuttle. And that way I can use those two threads together to make the rest of my stitches. And this is enclosing my end with my stitches because it's following my core threads and just makes it easy to make the stitches without having to flip it inside every time. So there's two, one pico, two stitches, one pico, two stitches, one pico, and that's enough now. I'm going to now remove the end here from my shuttle, just pop it back out like this, give it a tug to make sure it's nice and snug in there and just cut it close to your last stitch. So that's one end dealt with. Now once I've done the fifth pico of this ring, I'm gonna insert a magic loop. Here's one of my magic loops. I'm gonna put it here. So I'm gonna carry on making my stitches. So there's three picots now. So two stitches, one pico. Two stitches, one more pico. And now I'm going to add my magic loop so that at the end I can just pull my last end in and I won't need to sew it in. So I'm just fiddling a little bit here, placing it in the right place to make my stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, I've got two more picots to make. So that's the sixth pico of my ring. You can see I'm taking the time to make sure my magic loop goes through and follows the core thread. So two more stitches and one last pico. you want to leave the last half stitch or you don't want to have your um, magic loop in the last half stitch so this is my last the first half of my last stitch I'm gonna now 
just pull it out of the way my magic loop just bend it behind and make the last half stitch of my seven so I've got seven picots I can close the ring and I've got my magic loop inserted in there so that we can use it right at the end when we're finished like this so after the first large ring or after every large ring in this round, you want to join back into the picot, just underneath it. Oops. So just a lock join. Make sure my magic loop stays out of the way. So a lock join in the picot just underneath it. And now we're going to make the small ring that's in between each of the large rings. This little ring here. And it's three stitches. Oh no, sorry. First you have to leave about two millimeters of bare thread. Like this. Then three stitches. Join to the large ring. And here I start my next stitch with a first half. I just find it looks a bit nicer. It's only very small. So one stitch, a pico, another pico, and three stitches, two, three. So the little ring is three, joined to large ring, one stitch, one pico, one stitch, one pico, and three stitches. Close the ring. And now you want to join to the next pico of your little rings here, again leaving two millimeters of bare thread between your ring and your join. And now you're ready to make the next big ring. There's no bare thread before the big rings or after them. So two stitches join to the small ring and then two stitches and then a set of six picots separated by two stitches. So that's the first one, two stitches, another picot. Two stitches, another pico. So that's three picos. Four, five, six. And close the ring. And then don't forget to again make a lock join in the same pico just underneath the large ring. And now you're ready to make your next little ring. Again, you leave two millimeters of bare thread, three stitches, join to the last pico of your previous big ring, one stitch, a pico, one stitch, another pico, and three stitches, two, three, and close the ring. So now you repeat again until you have eight large rings with the little rings in between. I said repeat until you have eight large rings, but I forgot we were going to join it to the piece I'm already working on. So I've now made three large rings. I'm on the fourth large ring and I'm going to join here to my piece. So just line it up here. So I've made, and that's the, th the pico where I've joined, two more picots and I'm joining on the top pico here, the center one. So make a join and then finish your large ring. Two and then three more picots after this join. And close the ring. And now as you can see I'm going to make one more large ring that's not going to be attached and then attach again to this ring. So as you can see, I've made the one more large ring and the next little ring and I'm ready to make the next large ring which is going to be attached to this medallion here. So two stitches 
join to the previous small ring. Two stitches a pico. Two stitches, another pico. Two stitches and join. To the other medallion. Keep it out of the way and finish the ring. Two stitches and then three more picots with two stitches in between each. That's two, one more pico, three, and close the ring. So that's it, join like this. So now I'm gonna make two, four, I've got six large rings. I'm gonna make two more large rings and come back when it's ready to make the very last one. So here we are, I've made the last large ring and joined back into, made a lock join in the pico underneath as before. So we have eight large rings and then we just need to make the very last small ring in between to complete the design. thread, three stitches, join to the previous ring, one stitch, one pico, one stitch, and now you want to join it to your very first ring. And we're going to do that with a folded join, so you want to fold it so that the back of your first ring is facing you, and you want to go into your pico from behind, grab your thread to join and then complete your join as normal with the three stitches, the last three stitches of your last ring. One, two, three. And then you can unfold it and then close your ring. So from the front here I'm going to finish closing the little ring like this. Now you can cut your thread and use the hook of your shuttle or another hook if you don't have one on your shuttle and go from behind the pico to make the last join. Grab your thread and pull it behind like this and pass your end through it. Make sure your little bit of bare thread is the right length on the front. So it's the same size as the others. And then tighten that last little knot to make it secure. And then all that's left to do is to use your magic loop that you inserted at the beginning. You have to open here. Place your thread end in your magic loop and then pull it through your stitches to open it up to put your finger through it so you can pull like this and pull and keep pulling until your thread is all in the stitches like this adjust your shape and cut very close to the lace. So that's it. We've just added one more to this piece. Here's how to make the little one shuttle medallion. I hope you enjoy it. See you next time. Bye bye.